So I casually learned about Western States in 2013 when a grad school friend invited me to join her and her family on a hike up the escarpment at Olympic Valley, which I didn't know anything about that at the time. And then we made uh, the trip down the hill and stopped, ironically, in Auburn and ate at the Ale House. And then I remember seeing a sign in Auburn that said the endurance capital of the world. And I was like, this sounds like a place for me. I need to know more about this place. Then fast forward to 2015, my then boyfriend, now husband Rodney, shared an ultra running magazine with me. I started talking about how he had qualified for Western States for multiple years and he was getting ready to go into another qualifying. And so I was pretty intrigued. He's like, okay, let's watch this movie. And we watched Unbreakable and I was just so inspired that I did not even think. I just dove right in and said, well, I'm gonna do all the races that you're doing. And so I registered for a 50K, a 50 miler, and a 100K race over the span of three months. And that was my introduction to ultra running and qualifying for Western States the first time. And so I asked him to coach me and he agreed. And my two goals in that first training cycle was to make it to all three finish lines and to avoid injury. He did it. He got me to all three finish lines. At mile 50 during Miwok, I told him that I thought my legs were for sure broken. He just looked at me really casually and he said, welcome to ultra running, see you at the finish. <laughs> so I made it to the finish and you know, as it turned out, my legs weren't broken. And so that was my introduction to Western States and then also started my qualifying journey to get in myself. She's, uh... She's very humble and wouldn't uh, say it, and I think she forgets in her mind how strong she is because, you know, when we first met, she'd only run one half marathon on a trail. She was wanting to run a 50K, and then I was signing up for all the lotteries the following year, and she said, oh, I'll sign up too. And so she got into Way Too Cool 50K, she got into Lake Sonoma 50 miler, and she got into Miwok 100K. And she has been a soccer player as she was younger and she had a history of stress fracture. She managed to run from one half marathon to doing all those races back to back in three months time, which is just incredible. Hopefully she draws on that when she's out there and times get tough. The girl's tough. She just has to believe in herself. And you know, she is like one really tough lady. And I know, I know she's got what it takes to get to that finish line. I know she's been waiting a long time. And, she can't wait, I can't wait. Everybody's so excited for her, so yeah, just can't wait for this party to start. Last year, Rodney and I bought a ton of raffle tickets for the pre-race raffle drawing that happens at Olympic Valley. So for some reason, our raffle tickets weren't in sequential order, so we had to solicit a bunch of friends to help look through the tickets as the, the winning ticket numbers were being called. And one ticket number was called, and we're looking through, and then Randy just like casually saunters over, as he does, and he's he said, what was that number again? because I was writing them down and so I read I read it aloud to him and he just smiled and then he started tearing the ticket and um, he handed it to me and he said go get your race entry and that was when my first thought was no fucking way <laughs> <laughs> and then I just remember running up there and just being in total disbelief. You know, I was shaking and... Did you get her on video? I that did. was a lot of cries. She cries more than I cry. <laughs> I cry. She cried more. Oh my god. I feel fucking awesome. <laughs> I am so stoked like this has been I am shaking this has been so many years in the making and to get the opportunity I'm just thrilled and so grateful yeah yes. I'm just so grateful to have this opportunity and I feel like if I lose sight of that perspective during the race, I'm just going to go back to that moment. So to honor that gift and, and Randy for giving that to me, number one, I will keep moving until my feet cross that finish line and then I also will be wearing bib number 110 because that is the date he went into remission. 
When he ran the race last year, he wore the bib 406 because that's when he was diagnosed with testicular cancer. So I thought it was appropriate that I carry with me the accomplishment of going through that treatment and being officially confirmed to be in remission on January 10th. So bib 110 will be with me all 100.2 miles. How you doing, man? Yeah. I'm good. Good to see you too. Oh, am I falling down on the job? Yeah. Okay. I know. Yeah. 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 All these years. Yeah. So this is your main big kiss. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I've done 21 ultra marathons to date. A way too cool 50k, four times, Ruckachuk 50k, Tahoe Rim Trail 55k, Havelina 50k, Formidable 50k, Lake Sonoma 50 miler twice, AR 50 twice, Cool Moon 50 miler, Miwok 100k, Canyons 100k four times, <laughs> Tahoe Rim Trail 100 miler, Rio de Lago 100 miler, and Havelina 100 miler. This is my seventh year. Uh, my qualifiers have been uh, Miwok 100K, Canyons 100K several times, because I wanted that to be my qualifier. I was just gonna keep doing that race forever until I got into Western States, because initially my idea was that Western States was gonna be my first 100 miler. And after it taking several years to qualify and not getting in and hearing from other more veteran runners suggested you know you might want to run 100 miles before you run western states 100 miles so i took that to heart um, and i ran tahoe rim trail 100 mile as my first 100 and then i did rio de lago 100 miles and then javelina 100 miles Oh, so glad you guys are here. Yeah. Now I can relax. Now it's sorry. <laughs> yeah. So now I can say thank you for being here. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, it seems like the easy part. I think it is. You know? Yeah. I hug if I'm on the side of the trail. Okay, same, <laughs> Tell me same. to keep moving. Yes. <laughs> Drop, slap, slap on the side of the head. I won't say it so nicely. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. You're going to crush it. Yeah. Uh, I love you so much. Yeah, it's just so happy. Yeah. I have this journey with you guys. It's yeah. very special. Yes, yes. It's going to be a great day. Yes. It's going to be a great day. Yeah. Okay. So I have three goals. Official finish, that means less than 30 hours. Secondary goal is to get to Roby Point with enough time to enjoy that last section. And then the third goal is to be nice. <laughs> uh, because everybody I think knows that crew really stands for a cranky runner endless waiting. So I really don't want to make my crew's job any harder than it already is by being snarky. So, <laughs> so those are my goals. I feel fit, I feel healthy, I feel 
confident. The main goal for training was that I didn't want to have any doubts in my training as I got to the start line and that's exactly how I feel. Really happy with my training and where I'm at and healthy and really ready just to get to the start line right now. <laughs> yeah, bring it on. <laughs> So my crew chiefs are Kelly Valentine and Brian Medley. Kelly is my trail sister. She and I instantly bonded um, on the trail several years ago and since then we've shared so many miles and became very well matched running partners. There's even video footage at one of the runnings of canyons where our stride and our arm swings are completely in sync as we were going to the porter potties and we even opened the doors in complete unison <laughs> it's one of my favorite clips and i got to be a part of her western states journey in 2017 and so i'm very excited that she is going to be a part of mine yeah and then brian medley i met as a medical volunteer with norcal ultras and he crewed and paced me at Haviland 100. And so I'm really happy that he's on my team again for this journey. So my coach is Megan Canfield and she put together online training program for me and definitely more mileage than I've ever done. I incorporated a lot more speed work and she's obviously a very successful runner. So I felt, hey, if she's gonna set me up in my training for Western States, I, I'm not going to question this. I'm just going to do it and check it off the list and that's what I did. And then I have Lauren Watson who will pace me from Michigan Bluff to the river on the near side. Uh, she, I met her and her husband Jimmy at the memorial weekends and I feel like we just became fast trail friends. And she ran, she successfully ran Western States last year, so I feel pretty lucky that I'll have her with me while she has that experience sort of at the forefront of her mind. Hey Carolyn, by now you already know that I tested positive for COVID this morning and um, won't be able to be there to be your crew chief this year while you run Western States. And while I am incredibly sad that I can't be there for you the way that you were there for me, I have no doubts in my mind that you are in great hands with the rest of the team and that you're gonna be amazing. You have trained so hard and waited so long for it to be your turn. So I will be here at home. We'll be watching, following along all day. You're gonna be great. And uh, we can't wait to see you cross that finish line at Auburn. Love you much. Like, how is the time and what the time is? They're also. And it's because everyone was smart. <laughs> 
Yeah, and you look really great. good. You look yeah, really good. Yeah. I, I, I like, I, yeah, I like that section. I've never seen it. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, now I know everything. Yeah. I mean, this was my first goal, get here. Yep. Yeah. So, How'd you like hiking? There's no need to eat. Yeah, I mean, I'm eating everything. <laughs> it's all good stuff. There. You look amazing. Thank you. Thank As we all lie to you. I know. <laughs> First time she's actually got to have crew, so she can have a little extra time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't spend any time in any yeah, other no, no reason to. Yeah. yeah. Put it on there, okay? Yeah. It's going to be important later on. <laughs> so have you guys been here for a million hours? No, no, you're good. You're good. No, you look pretty, no, Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty. Thank you. Yeah. It's worth it. <laughs> Thank you guys. What a great pit crew. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Carolyn! Nice work, girl! Beautiful, like, mild there again. How did you do it? She was And then, last but certainly not least, Rodney, my husband, will pace me from the river all the way to the finish. Nobody knows me better than Rodney. He knows what makes me tick. He knows how to make, how to motivate me, even if I don't like it in the moment. And when he ran Western States in 2016, I paced him for this section. So it just feels very apropos that the script is switched for for my race. 14, Look at that smile. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. I'm happy to see you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, ready to go. So finally, we're here at Western States 2023, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank all the people that it took to get me here and there are so many people I know I might forget someone so if I do I apologize but first and foremost I have to thank my husband Rodney you were the one who introduced me to the sport you've been there every step of the way you motivated me to aspire to run Western States one day and so here we are seven years later and I have started to believe in myself because of how much you have believed in me over the years that means the world to me and I'm so excited to go on this journey with you I have to thank my family you've always believed me from day one every time I've wanted to do something crazy my mom my sister Elizabeth and and my brother-in-law Andy you traveled all the way from Connecticut having you here means the world to me I know my dad also really wanted to be here but we'll be supporting from afar and that also means a lot to me as well my crew chief Brian Medley thank you for taking the reins thank you in advance for everything that you're gonna do to triage anything that comes up along the way I also have to thank my other crew chief who couldn't be here Kelly my trail sister, I know you wanted to be here and I know you were absolutely crushed not to be able to be here, but you're here with me in spirit. Lauren, thank you so much for agreeing to pace me from Michigan Bluff down to the river. I am so looking forward to all the fun that we're gonna have on that section. You just ran Western States last year and you did amazing. I feel so lucky that you agreed to be here and support me. I also have to thank your husband, Jimmy. I'm just so blessed to have met you last year on the Memorial Day runs. I'm just so grateful to have you both here for this journey, so thank you. Barry and Teresa, thank you doesn't even cut it. You guys have been there from the first 50 miler. You were there for my first 100 miler in Tahoe, and here we are finally at Western States. Randy, oh man, right before the 2022 Western States run at the pre-race briefing when we were looking through all the tickets that we had purchased in hopes that I would get an entry and the moment that you started waltzing over I had a feeling that you had a winning ticket but I did not anticipate that 
you would gift it to me. That was one of the most amazing gifts anyone could have ever given me. It still means a whole lot to me to be able to be here and have this opportunity to go on this journey. Fine. Yeah, it's all good. Totally fine up here. Good job. Thank you. Looking good. Thank you. Even if it's a lie. It's, it's not a lie. You look pretty. And I'm liking bra. And um, can you repeat that? Full change, as in clothing and shoes and socks. Thank you. Thank you. I keep smiling to convince my brain that that's the situation. You got it. You got it. I'll need all the time. Until eight? Yeah. That's fine. And then that would work out. Yep. I tried to push it to get here even earlier because I wanted like. Is this the right thing? That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I read your book. Right? I'm like, well, I didn't expect to be pushing good off. But here we are. We're gonna go down. We're gonna come down. You're going to go up here under those tents. Right up there, you can get broth or whatever you want. Uh, yes, okay. We're going to finish a good glass of water, right? Perfect, thank you. That's perfect. Thank you guys so much. Come this way. Come on. Come on. So oh, it's so good to see you. Hours. Oh, you look great. Right on, fabulous. The doctor at Devil's Sun was like, "Are you okay?" And I was like, "Yes." <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I really good. Like yeah, you've like been really strong. Sweat. And I think it's because I did training and I'm sweating a ton. I'm it's not getting sure. chilly now. Yeah. But like going up Devil's Thumb, I was like, like just dripping sweat and it just put together. Freezing. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. You look good. Thank you. That you know seems like an accomplishment. Made it to a Michigan That's Club by the time the women's women. Did you winner. Did you the Wi Fi over there? No. One. <laughs> Well, you're doing perfect on time. It looks like you're going to be out here right at 8 o'clock. <laughs> I was rushing to get here so I could have like 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. Oh and my I was like, gosh. I guess 18 minutes will do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know if you got out of here too fast, you would be, I wouldn't be able to go. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That was intentional. <laughs> I was like, I need to wait. Well, I think the problem was I've run almost like the whole thing by, by myself. Um, you know, so, it was so like I would see. I mean, that's like a wild like eight. No. Oh, no. Can I we'll procrastinate water. anything else? Do I need anything else? No. We'll see you in six miles. Can I yeah. fuck out? Can I shave my legs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to pack it? Onward. Here? <laughs> Go 110. Go. <laughs> For everything. Are you on? I'm, I was, I had a moment in five minutes where I dropped. You know what the wind helped with though? Like the bugs here right? in oh, Michigan. There were not mosquitoes, yeah, but it's also yeah. not green. Yeah. Yeah. It's just dry. Hi. Bye guys. My name's Lauren Walker, and I am Carolyn Eason from Michigan Bluff down to the river. Oh man, having her on this race, I hope man, her feet hold together. I hope she has good friends on the trail and beautiful weather and high spirits and gets to soak in 
the day that she was given. Okay, and Carolyn, I just wish you the best day out there. You worked your ass off for this. And I just hope that you have the best day that you've earned and that you get to see that finish line and enjoy it with your friends and family and everyone who's there to celebrate you and all the hard work and this accomplishment that you've put in over the years. Nice job! Crushing it, girl. Yeah. She's doing great. Kelly! Woo! Woo! Thank you! Yeah. You're an hour, about an hour ahead of the 30. Oh, I have the best. <laughs> yeah, I'm the best runner. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> my mom, I was like, that's so funny, mom. Yeah, you just said I'm doing fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, there you can see the unicorn. It's dressed. Oh. Apparently, it's a unicorn. What unicorn? Holy sh! It's not a hallucination. Oh, it is not a hallucination. <laughs> Who is inside? I have no idea. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. I'm literally going to pee my pants. <laughs> what is in your luggage? Like, yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> because it's fans. <laughs> that is hysterical. Sorry to make you laugh. Are you wearing a brown goodness? You want to uh, Can Can we activate that as well? Yep. What shoes do you have? Oh, yeah. Shells are? Yeah, they, you know, they turn that way. Eating like a savage. Oh my god! Yeah. Hi! Hi. <laughs> Surprise! She's like, but wait, what about that piece of pizza? Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. sit for that in my body. I think she's hey, stronger than mine. Is your biggest muscle? That's right. Yeah. Thank awesome. you guys. You know everyone wanted to. I know. Oh yeah, I want to so badly. I know. I know, I love that section. Yes. So All right, ladies. <sighs> You're at Cal Street. All right, Cal Street. We'll see you at the river. Yeah. Nice work. So Carolyn and I know each other from working medical aid stations for NorCal Ultras. So we've spent a lot of time helping other runners accomplish their goals. So she's a lot of fun to work with. We have a kind of a sick sense of humor when it comes to treating people. I'm sure she'll laugh when she sees that. <laughs> so I'm the crew chief. I'm not 100% sure what that means as far as her expectations, but I'll do my best to meet her expectations. I think I'm mainly a timekeeper and keep machine oiled and ready to go and keep up with what she needs. So I hope Carolyn takes a look around at the top of the mountains. That's one thing I didn't do the first year I ran it. I think I missed a lot of the real pretty nature. And the second time I looked around, I was like, wow, this is actually really, really nice. So don't forget to look around. I know you'll be focused on the trail, but look around and enjoy it. Great. Super well, proud man. of you. Have fun out there. Do a good job and we got your back when you need it. Oh, my dear. Hi. Hello. Hello. It's all the feelings. I know, right? All right, guys, let's go, Carolyn. Have fun out there. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> I'm Rodney Lake, Carolyn's husband, and I will be crewing and pacing her from uh, near side of the river to the finish. I am hoping that 
she takes time to really enjoy the day. It's the most incredible race you can be in, and she's been a part of it for years on the other side. And she crewed and paced me in 2016, so she knows what the race is all about. But it's nice for her to be able to, you know, really feel what it's like to be a rock star for a day. You know, you come into these aid stations and they're like nothing any other race has, especially when it's you that's running it. You know, it's a tremendous amount of pressure before the race. I know that she has really worked hard to get where she's at, and she's put in the years of training to do a really great job tomorrow. So I'm hoping she just enjoys every moment of it, even the low parts, and that she'd be able to look back on that afterwards and just like I do. I ran it in 2016, I think about it, you know, all the time. Yeah, it's just a, just such a special race, and the people who were there for you, and you know, you think back to the aid stations where you saw your crew, that finish line, it's just a magical place. So can't wait for her to experience that firsthand for herself. It's been seven years, so I'm really excited she's in. I am so proud of you and what all you've achieved in this training cycle especially. I've never seen you so fit, ever. I can't even keep up with you on your um, easy recovery runs. So then I have to go out and run by myself to see if I'm still in shape. So. You know, you've just done an amazing job with training and getting every workout done. Yeah, you've been really dedicated and I think it's all gonna pay off for you tomorrow. I just wish you the best and I'm so proud of you. I love you. Digging deep today. There she is! There's our girl! All right, Carolyn. We're all here, girl. Waiting to scream for you. I don't know. Yeah. Are we dragging people? Don't worry about you. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, we picked up a phone now. We picked up a pacer. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I just came out with Megan. Hey. We came looking for it. Yay. I love it. I'll just pretend it's your number. Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 So fast, I need to feel like I need to take my long sleeve shirt off. I know. I'm good. It's a bridge of tears! Yeah. It is! <laughs> it's your race, girl! It's your race! Yeah. Okay, let's yeah. go! All right. today on the truck.
Okay, all right, so first things first. Cheers. <laughs> so I feel really good. I feel accomplished. I feel proud. I feel pretty content, and I also feel relieved. <laughs> I think that's a big part of it. I do still feel the finish line high and all the good vibes from that. I've never felt that for as long after a race before. And so that's been a nice unexpected thing that's happened post-race. I still kind of question myself, was it a dream? Like, did it actually happen? Or did I just wish for this to happen for so long that I had this amazing dream and it wasn't actually reality? And then on the flip side, I have this wonderful belt buckle that I get to wear. And it's, you know, a physical reminder that it did really happen. I'm super grateful and it does make you feel like, oh my gosh, I finished Western States. This is one of the longest standing goals I've ever had. And to just get to the finish line, I feel like was a huge accomplishment to begin with. And then so to go on the, the whole journey all the way to Auburn and then be welcomed into Auburn and to get this amazing buckle that I really treasure, that's what makes the finish real for me and makes me definitely feel and be very proud to be a Western States finisher and to be in that club. <laughs> 23, 23, 56, Carolyn Perotti Lake. Hey, Carolyn! Heather Robert is in. There we go. In 29, 23, 59, Jim Gowan. At 21, 29 hours and 29 minutes, Hyun Sook Young. Jason Patton. At 29, 29, 48, John Whitaker. Two more in the 29 and a half. So 29, 29, 52, John Blankenship. Good job, Carolyn. And rounding out our 29 and a half hour finishers, William Jackson. All right, moving into our Golden 30. So overall, I feel like there was less snow than what had been forecasted or predicted leading up. And overall, it wasn't as bad as I anticipated, but there was a lot of slipping and sliding, go down some sections on my butt. I think I wiped out and landed on one shoulder or the other eight to 10 times. And then on the flip side of that, it might have been my favorite section of the whole course because the views were just incredible. I was trying to take in the views as much as possible because I had never run that section. That was amazing. I didn't anticipate pushing the 30 hour cutoff and so that threw me for a loop coming into Robinson Flat. And they took this photo right before the start. They told us to write something on the bottom and I wrote, you get to be here. And so that was one of my mantras throughout the entire race. You get to dot, dot, dot. You get to be here. You get to push this cutoff. But then after I cross Swinging Bridge, and I'm climbing up to the thumb, weird symptoms started presenting themselves. I was having these cold sweats. I was super dizzy. My stomach was getting upset. It felt like all of a sudden my legs did not want to work. I was like, wow, this is strange. Strange things happen. You can come out of them. It might be temporary. Let's just see how this goes. And so I see Lauren and right away I, I give her the recap of the current situation. I'm like, there's good news and there's bad news. <laughs> and I think she opted for the good news first. I told her I was in good spirits. And then the bad news was the quads are trashed. They just don't want to move. My climbing isn't great. And then the downhills are, are starting to be more painful should at that point or so I thought and she's like okay sounds great we're we're just gonna keep we're just gonna go and, and see how it goes 
There were moments, both on Cal Street and I think on the section after ALT, where I said to my pacers, I'm in kind of a dark place. This is going kind of rough, but I'm still grateful to be here. And I definitely want to do this again. I have multiple highlights of the race. I don't know if I can pick just one with Rodney when we got to No Hands Bridge and he it was like, you, you did it. I could tell that finally the weight of all of his worry was lifted. And he said how proud he was of me. Yeah, and so we walked across the bridge and just enjoyed that moment together. Uh, I would say that was sort of our finish line uh, before that we made our way and then got to enjoy it with everybody. As soon as I stepped foot onto the track, the weight of the entire race and any unknown was gone. It was pure celebration and joy to, to finally be there. And I just felt like, and I don't know if this is true, but my experience was like the stadium just erupted. It was so loud, louder than I've ever heard it before. And I know it wasn't all just for me, but in the moment I was absorbing it all, people were calling my name and just cheering. And I'm seeing familiar faces. I'm seeing people I don't even know, but they're high-fiving. There's these little kids that are high-fiving and cheering and really getting into it. And it was just, yeah, this whole community was there like celebrating these last footsteps that I was taking to that finish and I feel like it was a celebration of the community effort that it took to to get there because without that I wouldn't have gotten there I slowly shuffled I didn't want it to end it was everything that I imagined and crossing that finish line hand in hand with Rodney that was really really special it was just such a moment that I don't think I'll ever forget. It was one of the best moments of my life. And I still have all those feels and I have all the gratitude to this community for making that happen. Um, in retrospect, I realized after the race that the constellation of weird symptoms I was feeling was because I had COVID that I didn't know I had. So I found out I had COVID the day after the race had a test at home, I figured, hey, what the heck, let me just take it, and it was positive. And I was like, no way, <laughs> no way. I saw so many people that I knew, both on a personal level and then also others just on an acquaintance level, locking eyes with people. The split second where you lock eyes as you're moving through an aid station, I could just totally feel, this is gonna get me all worked up, I could totally feel like this communal sense of encouragement and support and belief that everyone felt, and not just me, but in every runner, but I was, I was feeling it personally. That is what I fucking love about this race and this community. I felt it on the other side where I've supported this race and people in so many ways and I've, I've felt those things towards them. I believed in them and I knew they could do it and I wanted to support them in any way possible and so I recognized those facial expressions and the look in people's eyes immediately. That's what touched me so deeply. That's how I knew no matter what I was finishing this thing because look at all these people here to support me whether they knew me or not and that was pretty that was amazing that was pretty special yeah <laughs> 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 It's so beautiful. <laughs> and if only we could encapsulate all of that goodness that happens in Western states and sort of just spread it out in the rest of the world. There's something special that I, I don't know if I can properly put into words, but I felt it in my heart. Uh, Carry that with me in some of the dark moments. Yeah, the human spirit. There's nothing more powerful than that. Yeah and when community comes together, yeah. You look pretty, how do you feel? 
I feel pretty now that I have this like new shiny beautiful buckle that we worked really really hard to get yeah and all the memories in the buckle like yeah that's the magic of the buckle I feel like every time like you every time you put it on you're always like it just comes right back so yeah So thank you. I don't think I'm going to be able to articulate the uh, amount of gratitude that I have for everyone who's been involved in my journey years ago to this point of getting to Western States and then, and then from the start line all the way to the finish line. But thank you first to my crew, the people who were there in person, my husband who crewed and paced. Um, my other crew chief, Brian Medley, my other pacer, Lauren, and also her husband, Jimmy Watson. And then uh, behind the camera scenes, Lauren Chancellor. Then I have my family who came all the way from Connecticut. My mom, Mary, my sister Elizabeth, and her husband, Andy. I have Barry and Teresa Pearson who came to Forest Hill and they even brought Paisley at my request. Coach Megan, thank you so much for training me. I look forward to working together again over however many years it takes to get back into this race. So let's do it. <laughs> Randy, you gifted me this opportunity when you gave me that raffle ticket. And I put so much importance into seeing this race through because of the significance I felt attached to that gift. I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. I don't know how long it would have taken me in the lottery to get in, but you made it happen for me. There's no greater gift and there's no amount of thank yous that I could express for that opportunity to take that, that journey. So thank you.